I think this would be the episode where at the beginning there'd be a narrator and it says, this week on a very special Lou and Me. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about, this is our 13th episode. Oh. And 13 plays a pretty large part in our family and our life together. The number 13. The number 13. Do you want to, it's, it's, I considered our family's number, right? Like. Yeah. Yes, I consider our family's number, yeah. but I also consider it my number. Oh. Yes. Well, greedy, greedy. <laughs> well, it all started <laughs> yeah. back in 1990. Ooh. When, uh, shortly after I turned 12. Right. Um, you turned 13? The, no, the, doctor, <laughs> the doctors told me that I would need surgery. Oh, no. Like a pretty major heavy-duty surgery. Oh, yeah. As soon as possible. Yikes. And so the next month I had to have major back surgery to correct my, the curvature of my spine, also known as scoliosis. You had a really bad I had a case. severe yeah. S curve, which my spine looked like an S, Ow. the letter S. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to have surgery on December 13th, 1990. Oh, wow. Yeah. So was, you had. I had an eight and a half hour surgery. I had on the thirteenth of December. That's yeah. interesting. And next month, on December thirteenth, it will be thirty years. Thirty years since that surgery. Yeah. Hey, do you? I, I know for a while we celebrated your birthday on December thirteenth. Do you feel, yeah. in some ways, like that surgery was a rebirth for you? Yes, because um, unfortunately, I was I moved out slash got kicked out on my eighteenth birthday, mm -hmm. and so I didn't want to share any kind of those feelings with my biological parents. And so I wanted to separate myself from that day as far as I possibly could. Right. And the next like logical day that I would be willing to celebrate my life, which is, you know, what you do on your birthday, you celebrate your life was the day of my surgery because prior to my surgery, I had asthma and I was, I was not, I didn't just have a curvature of my spine in the shape of an S. Right. It was also rotating my spine and my... So my, it was like my, an S-shaped Mobius strip. Well, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> it felt like it. Yeah. So I had asthma. I couldn't do... I couldn't run like I was able to. I couldn't do PE. I got winded very easily. It, I was. It was obviously very painful. Well, your body was crushing your internal organs in some way, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so it was putting a lot of strain on my heart. And a lot of strain on my lungs. And so I was in a tremendous amount of pain, which in the pain is what notified me of this whole thing in the beginning. I had surgery and then, so that became like my life celebration right. day. Yeah. And so, um, yes, we did celebrate my birthday on that, on that day. We celebrated your birthday on December 13th until Fred was born. And then you decided. Just about, yeah. yeah. And then you arrived around year two of Fred's birthdays, you mm -hmm. decided that you wanted to just start celebrating together since you guys technically, Our your November birthdays are only 12 days apart. Yeah. Yeah. Thirteens. So that's my number. That's why it all started was my number. Well, it's also my number. I don't want to, I like, this is a stretch in uh -huh. some ways, but I'm six foot seven, which adds up to 13. <laughs> my yep. last name starts with the 13th letter of the alphabet. Yep. My full name with my middle initial is 13 letters. Yep. <laughs> right. Like there's a lot of like 13s for me too. Yeah. You know, if I'm like searching around for them. Right. But. So when we had our first baby. He was due on the 5th of August, mm -hmm. but he went overdue and he was born on the 13th of August. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And that was kind of like, oh, that's meant to be. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And then we got pregnant with our second baby three and a half years later right? or three years later. And he came out on the 13th of his birth month, February. Yep. And we're like, oh, this is wild. This is crazy. And then we thought we were done having babies for a while. Yeah, we're like, how weird is that? That's yeah, just that's, so cool. It's, that's it's so meant cool. to be our family. They're three and a half years apart to the day. Yeah. Which is like fascinating. So then cut to baby number three, five years later. Right. And the doctors are telling us, and we're like, nah, it'll probably be a 13th baby. Because <laughs> it was lining up to be, you know, January 8th. And I'm like, nope, he's going to go the 13th. Yeah, I just know it. I just know it. And they're like, oh, well, the 13th is a Saturday. Yeah. And we don't do inductions on that day. Right. 
there's not going to be a doctor around on that. I'm like, it's middle of Idaho. Who knows? Yeah. And, uh, nope. He waits till this kid <laughs> waits till six minutes after midnight on yep. the 13th to be born. Yep. So he's a 13th baby too. January 13th. So nine years later, <laughs> we have baby number four coming. And I'm like, oh, it's going to happen. 13th comes and goes. Wouldn't you know it? Yep. Comes and goes. But three days later, here she comes. Yep. So she's a 16th baby. But I think she did that on purpose. I think so, too. Yeah. Because she's a girl. She's yeah. different already. Yeah. 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 I didn't have much morning sickness with her. With the boys, I was sicker than I don't know what. But with her, I was barely sick at all. And three days after the 13th, she came. With Liam, I remember. So I was also late. I was supposed to be born in June. Oh. And I ended up being born in July tw- on July 12th. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's because I was meant to be a cancer. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not that big into astrology, but like, I just kind of, I it, feel like a cancer. It, so. <laughs> uh, it kind of lines up here and there when you want it to. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's fun little details yeah. to play around with and see what really matches up and what really lines up. Yeah. I think it's, it's not something I'm like, oh my God, um, my moon is in Venus and my <laughs> right. sun. <laughs> right. Which some people can do it and feel yeah. it. And that's great. I, I just, it, no, I don't get that. It's deep. too much. I just go, oh, yeah, cancer. Yeah, I like to be content and ruby is my birthstone. <laughs> whoop de doo yeah. uh, So I thought that Liam might be born uh, because he was he was due 24 years after my birthday, mm-hmm. which made him also Chinese astrology, a tiger just like me. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, maybe he'll be born on the 12th too. Uh-huh. And then we'll have this like weird exact to the day, yep. 24 years and one month apart. Yeah. <laughs> But then he came on the 13th and I was like, oh, that's still cool. Yeah. That's still really cool. So even, even it goes back just a little bit further. You asked me out on our first date on the 13th. Yeah. Accidentally. I didn't yeah. know any of this 13th uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we have my operation, mm-hmm. our anniversary, baby one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of it's just kind of cool. Yeah. Numerology is is kind of like interesting to It's interesting to play around too just like astrology, right? There's yeah. just inter- it, I don't know. Those pseudosciences are kind of fun. Yeah, they're fun. But they're not like something to take super serious or anything no. like that, but But it makes it also makes it special cuz you know, it on the birthday of your birthday. Yeah. So like for you it'd be the 12th of when you turn 12. Oh, on yeah. the 12th of your July, that's birthday. your golden birthday. Yeah. Well, all the boys had cool 13th golden birthdays. Yeah, it so was they, really neat. So their golden birthday is when they turn 13, which yeah. is also like yeah. commonly thought of as becoming a man. I don't really prescribe oh, it yeah, that. But that yeah, too, yeah. That was interesting. Even in Celtic yeah. like, traditions, when you turn 13, you're basically a dude. Yep. You're a man. You're a man. So Freddie's sweet 16 will be on her, will be her golden birthday also. Yeah. See, that's pretty fascinating too. Cause that's, the sweet 16 is a, is a, a thing that a lot of girls yeah. look forward to and celebrate. Yeah. Right? So you become a woman during that time. No, I don't know. It's just kind of like fun and fascinating. It's like my own little science experiment. <laughs> It's can like you, so fun. I don't you understand. Imagine, can you imagine Fred at 16? Is she oh going to be awful? <laughs> Is <sighs> she going to be terrible? Like, oh, shut up, dad. Just <laughs> take me and my friends to the mall. Kendra, my dad is going to drive us. <laughs> no, no, I will not allow it. I hope not. I put my foot down. I hope not. Cause I'm going to be a real pushover. <laughs> exactly. So I, I know that some people don't like, the 13th of anything. And it, and of course, well, there's a lot of superstition around. Exactly. Of course, according to the history channel, if you, if you like want to figure out why it's unlucky, it's unlucky because of course, biblical nonsense, right. Right. But it's an uneven number, right? Yeah. But a lot of numbers are uneven. I know, but like the 12 apostles, if there's one more, it's unlucky. Right. 
It's just, I don't it's like you can have 12 people at a dinner party, but not 13. So how different would it be if the, if the Bible had had 13, isn't there like a secret 13th <laughs> apostle? I thought, well, yeah. Or is that just from dogma with guns? <laughs> yeah. I think that's, I think that there's 12 apostles and. But yeah, but no, that was in dogma. The 13th apostle was in dogma. Yeah. It was Chris Rock's Kevin character. Smith movie, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay. So. By the time this uh, episode airs, the next day will be Friday the 13th. And I always get kind of like, ooh, this spooky cute. Yeah, because this episode um, will come out on the 12th. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the next day will be. So I like even, it when it becomes Friday the 13th. Me too. Yeah. Because then, and then, like, if it lands on one of the boys' birthdays, it's kind of cool and auspicious feeling. Yeah. But even a Friday has biblical attachment of unlucky so i don't know how they know this but jesus was crucified on a friday supposedly (laughs) yeah because isn't that why um doesn't easter always no does easter always land on a friday or no it's a sunday it's sunday it's it's a easter sunday but the friday before is the day of his yeah isn't that what's that called good friday good friday Yeah. yeah But I don't know if it's always the 12th. Easter changes days, but it's like the the second Sunday of the month or something. Mm, Yeah. I don't know. But so maybe if it's if you're not paying attention to biblical stuff, it doesn't have to be unlucky. Right. It can be fun and spooky. We've found it to be unlucky when using it for gambling. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true. We don't bet on 13. No, don't bet on 13. <laughs> at all, because yeah. we tried it once. We were at a Christmas party. Right. And they set up this, uh, what was it exactly? Roulette? Was it roulette? No, I, it was blackjack. But like blackjack. They, there was like a Christmas party and they brought, all, brought out all this casino type games. Yeah, it was casino night. Yeah, and we could, you know, play with fake chips and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It wasn't for real money or anything. Right. But you could get prizes and all that. Right. There was some like, yeah. So you and I were playing blackjack. Was it blackjack? It must have been yeah. blackjack. And it came up 13 and we're like, ooh. And then we bet real hard for it and yeah. then it failed. And we're like, um, that's a sign right yeah, there. Yeah, it's probably not, like thinking back, probably not great to hit on a 13 anyways in blackjack. Well, but. Because you don't want, because 21 a bust. And so. Right. Hitting on a 13, it's not very far away from 21. So (laughs) most of the cards that come up are going to bust you, right? So so we were like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do that. So every time after that, because she did, your boss did that a couple more times of those casino night things, we didn't, we folded or we, you know, and it worked out. (laughs) It worked out way, way better for us. It does work out for us though. Like, um, like when we bought our house in Hendersonville, we, we built on lot 13. Mm Mm-hmm. Our address wasn't 13, but yeah. we, the lot that we built on was 13, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of just 13 comes up a lot for us if we're looking. Yeah. And th- it makes us pay attention. Yeah. I think we see it more because it's we're come up so it Yeah. Come up so, so much in our yeah. lives. So, yeah. I like the number. I think it's a good number. It's a great number. <sighs> I've had good luck with it. Yeah. Me too. I've had very healthy, happy babies. Yeah. Well, I met. And the love I had of my a, life and aw. all of my sons on the 13th of a month. Aw. Right. Yeah. So. And now, that's so now. Pretty good. <laughs> so now we, our anniversary, we make it a 13. Well, yeah, it is October 13th every mm-hmm. year. Right? Yep. Because that's the day that. Um, you asked me out. That I asked you out. Yeah. yeah. So. We're and like, became, we became us, you and me. We became. Lou and me. (laughs) That's a very good one. Good job. Yes. (laughs) So what are some other things that you want to talk about? I've got a couple of things. Do you mind um, on our very special 13th episode? (laughs) Go ahead. I I just revealed that, you know, 13s follow me and I'm okay with it. I would like to talk about normalization. Okay. Taking things that are commonly, I don't want to say not normal. Because I I want to normalize them, but like wearing nail polish as a man. Okay. So things that are specifically gendered. Something that, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess nail polish. Well, I don't know. It's marketed towards women. It is marketed towards women. I like wearing nail polish like a lot. Even to the point of sparklies and stuff, which 
is kind of <laughs> is kind of uh, adorable in a lot of ways. It's even more adorable when you only do one hand because you're shite on the other hand, as you put it. Oh, yeah, because I can't, <laughs> can't, can't paint the other hand with my left hand. Like, my left hand just doesn't want to do the polish. Yeah, um, welcome to every club known yeah. to man. That's why that's why nail salons exist, to get a perfect, clean job of it done, because it's not easy to do yourself. Yeah, but that's the thing, too. Could I, Like, as a... As a man, could I go into, and you know, this might just be my own like fears manifesting, Mm -hmm. but as a man, can I go into a nail salon and not be judged for wanting to have my nails done? Absolutely. Absolutely. You could maybe not. I think, yes, ideally, but not uh, like every location, you know, maybe not like small Southern towns or whatever, but definitely in certain areas and places. I started, I started out really slow wearing nail polish. How old were you though? Oh God, 28. (laughs) (laughs) It was uh, when I was working at Paramore Red. Yeah. And I noticed that Penn and Taylor, or not both of them, but Penn of Penn and Taylor was painting his uh, ring finger on Uh one hand. And I'm not sure why he was doing that, but I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool look. Mm -hmm. And I was at that point in my life kind of experimenting with... Like I'd started stretching my ears, Mm -hmm. but I started painting just that one fingernail for a while. Mm -hmm. But one of my coworkers was like really freaked out by it, like did not like it. And I didn't want to like make people feel uncomfortable. So I, I just stopped doing it. Yeah. And then after that, after I left that job, I started just toying around with doing my pinky and my ring finger. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't copying pen anymore, but it was still... (laughs) I was kind of easing myself into it. Yeah. And then I think like towards the end of 2019 or, yeah, I think it was the end of 2019. It's hard to remember. This year has been such a weird year. It's hard to remember like time frames. Yeah. It's been real 2020 of a year. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a new cuss word. It's a new cuss word. <laughs> so I, I just said, oh, fuck it. I'm a grown man. I do whatever the fuck I want. And I mean... If you don't know, dear listener, I'm six foot seven. <laughs> I'm not somebody that most people just are going to start trying to beat up. Yeah, exactly. So I figured I'll just do it. I'll just wear the nail polish on my, like all, all my fingers. Mm-hmm. And then I quickly realized that I can't paint my, uh, <laughs> your right hand, right, my right hand because my left hand just doesn't want to cooperate. I can do it if it's like, if I don't mind like a real shitty looking job of it. Mm. But I, so I just started painting just my left hand and I've been collecting these sets of nail polishes from Hollow Taco. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of sparkly and cool, like the, the newest set kind of looks like the way oil looks on the ground where it's kind of shimmery, but it changes color depending on where you're, the light's hitting it. Oh yeah. Um, so that set looks like that, but uh, they also have a lot of holographic top coats which are made of glitter Mm -hmm. but then they get all sparkly and shiny like like unicorn hooves (laughs) Uh, and so i just i really like wearing it i don't it just makes me feel less uh, not less it makes me feel more like myself Mm -hmm. i don't know how that like i'm not like i'm not trans or anything like that like i don't feel like i'm a, a different gender a different gender than i was born or anything and I don't even think nail polish should be about gender. Mm-hmm. I think we gender things a lot in society. We label things and, and make it unacceptable for other genders to partake. Yeah. And I think that's pretty much bullshit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like that's the that's the go to for people who don't understand. Right. Like right. they go, oh, what are you gay or or do, what do you you know, do you think that you're a woman or something? You know, just stupid asinine um Trying to make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, dumb get hot a reaction. takes. Yeah, stupid hot takes from idiots. <laughs> yeah. But I just don't fucking care anymore. Yeah. Like, I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. Mm-hmm. It uh, cheers me up. Just makes me feel more normal. Yeah. You know, I'm not, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, am I a normal person, right? Like, Or the average person. Yeah. You are normal. Right. Yes, you're right. You are a normal you. That's what we're trying to talk about right now is normalizing 
I'm being, not average. You're normalizing being you. Right. You're not, not the average person. No, I'm huge. I'm a I'm a hey, giant stop. person. No, stop. no. I'm talking about stop. my height. Okay. I'm talking about my height. I'm a giant person. Like, you know, you do not come across on the on the daily mm-hmm. people that are six foot seven or even people that are six four and above, right? That's odd to see. It's right. not often you see. I I a lot of times I think it makes me like the most recognizable non-famous person because people <laughs> always remember me. Yeah. Um, if I've been someplace one time, they go, oh, I remember you came in. Well, it's because I'm yeah. different, right? I look different than, than average people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I also wear a giant beard all the time mm-hmm. and it's gray, like it's all <laughs> gray, right? So I just stand out. Yeah. Right. So I just said, you know, Fuck it. I'm just going to wear the nail polish. I like it. It makes me feel good. I think that anybody who wants to wear nail nail polish should be allowed to and should be encouraged to and not teased or harassed in any way. Because I think it's such a stupid, stupid thing to do. Exactly. How do you feel about nail polish on, on dudes? I like it. Yeah. As long as the nails aren't like crazy long. Like even if they are. Well, that's a totally different. Yeah. It's just not like. To me, you know, I don't know how to. You don't really like say long it. nails. I don't like on long anyone. nails. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, they're kind of like they they, for you, <laughs> they're like claws. They're like little <laughs> like like, like vampire like <laughs> claws or something. Because I know a, I've grown my nails like just a little bit too long, where they stick a little <laughs> bit past the finger, and then I'll like. <laughs> I'll like, hey, baby, and I'll like touch your arm, and you'll go, God, clip your nails, because <laughs> you don't like that feeling. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, but if you keep your nails short and and painted, I don't yeah. care. It's, yeah, I try to keep them. My favorite one that you did is the most recent one where it's the purpley blue. Oh yeah. And then you put glitter over top of it. It'll, it's I just really put, cute. I just put a line. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just put a line of the l- glitter. I'll put a picture of it in the show notes. It's so cute. Yeah. I like it. I'll put and a nobody, in the show notes. I've been out with you several times now since you started wearing it. And nobody says a word except for, oh, I like your nails. <laughs> like nobody yeah. says anything to you. I think it's because I'm huge, right? Like nobody's going to be like. You got that biker vibe. Stupid nails, bro. <laughs> like who's going to start a fight over something right. like that? You got right? that biker vibe with the tattoos and the stretched ears. And now you just painted the nails. Like, Wait, it's, is stretched ears a biker thing now? Well, kind of Maybe to a, a degree. It's more, it's not average. I'll right. tell you that. <clears throat> I even yeah, have no. mine done and it's not average. I don't see a lot of people with stretched ears anymore. Maybe that fad is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Just body art in general is not an average type of thing. It's more normal now or more. I guess it also kind of depends where you live. We we live yeah. out in a rural country, so we're not going to see a lot of people like ourselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And before that, it was Nashville. And lots of people in Nashville have stretched ears and, and tat, tattoos yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. So it's yeah. more comfortable about that. But. We gotta I find. Like it. We gotta find a tattoo shop in Memphis. I know. I have after the. I have more plans after we can go out again and COVID safely is, do stuff. COVID is ruining things. It's terrible. Yeah, but I've got a lot of tattoos I still want to get. All right. What? So else? that's that's nail polish, right? I think I just want people to, like, even like. So I thought about this too. Like, I also really like eyeshadow, mm-hmm. and um, I don't. I like. I can't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> but not because I think it doesn't look good or it wouldn't be cool. It's just that I can't do shit around my eyes. Like I can't have. <laughs> I like how that's the idea. That's well, the why. I can't. Well, that's you know, the... like, like I'll get something in my eye and I'll be like, look in my eye to see if you can find the thing. And we have to really struggle to keep my eye open so you can look at it. Cause my eyes just automatically don't uh, want anything near them. I can't. I or can't. if you go to trim my eyebrows, my <laughs> eyes just snap shut. Like, I don't know what that is. It's, it's just so funny that you say that because <laughs> it's almost comical the way it's it's kind of like that Friends episode where Rachel has to be wrestled to the ground by all of her friends and and surprised and held down so they could get eye drops in her eye. And I feel like you're the same I, You're oh the no. same. I can't, I can't do eye drops. I can't <clears throat> no. go anywhere near your eyes. Mm-mm. Back when I was in, when I was living in California before I moved to Arizona, and I was smoking a lot of weed. <laughs> 
my my buddy would be like, you got to put eye drops in your or your eyes are super red. We can't go into the grocery store unless you put eye drops in. I'm like, I'm just going to put on sunglasses. He's all, it's nighttime. I'm like, I can't put eye drops in. I can't do it. My eyes won't happen. Like I'll go to put the eye drops in. And then as I squeeze the thing, my eye will snap shut and the eye drop will just hit my, but like, I think you tried to help me with eyeliner one time, but the waterline thing, pff, fuck it. I can't do that. I cannot I go do that. anywhere near your yeah, eye. I can't do it. Um, <laughs> But I, you know, I, I think that, I think that if you want to wear makeup as a dude too, I think that should be completely I think normalized you, and fine. Whatever you want yeah. to do, whatever, whatever you, makes you feel right. Yes. Right. Whatever you want to do with your own body, you should be able to do within reason, as long as you're not hurting yourself kind yeah. of a thing, you should be able to do it. Yeah. I put on lipstick one time when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah. How did that go? I don't know. I don't have normal white person thin lips, right? Uh, I have kind of thick lips. Uh -huh. So I was just like, I wonder if I look good with <laughs> lipstick on. <laughs> and so I put it on and I was like, hmm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I never, <laughs> never thought about See, it again. I think we should make that too. Like if, especially boys, they're going to be curious about things, you yeah. know, those yeah. same way little girls are curious about makeup and and painting nails and all that stuff too. Yeah. The yeah, boys used to want to paint their nails too. We just put like clear sparklies on them and stuff. Yeah. It was cute. I think that's another thing about the nail polish that I like is, is I can kind of share that with, with Fred a yeah. little bit, right? Like I go, the Hey Fred, do, I go look at, do you like it? And she goes, Ooh, so pretty. So <laughs> much colors. Um, yeah, right and then now, she goes, I want mine done. Yeah. Right now she's rocking the, glitter yeah the, the glitter on all the digits well that's good for her because the glitter stuff doesn't chip as easily and mm -hmm. so she's like a little digger and and like really active and stuff yeah. right she's, so she's always lady. digging into the toys and <laughs> digging in dirt and digging <laughs> in her food and so like her nails don't get chipped as she's easy a, so <clears throat> she's a raccoon basically <laughs> she is kind of a little bit of a trash panda that's for sure yeah i i think whatever you want to do you should do to make you more you yeah I tried to, when I, again, when I was at Paramore, we were having a photo shoot and they had a makeup artist come in so that everybody would have like, like your skin tone would be all normalized, mm -hmm. right? In the, in the photographs. Cause they were doing like stark background photographs so that they could cut them out. And so they wanted everybody and they were going to be black and white. So they wanted everybody to have. Yeah. Not shiny faces. Not shiny, not blotchy. Yeah. And after everybody was done with the photo shoots, the, the makeup lady was still there and I ran <laughs> over and I was like, oh, can you do like, I want you to do like straight up just the most eyeshadow possible. Like, I want you to make me look like a clown or like somebody who just doesn't <laughs> get it and just put too much on. And I want it to be really vivid and bright. And she's like, oh yeah, okay. Uh-huh. And then she just gave me like a smoky eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, no way am I doing that. And then, uh, and then she showed me the mirror and I was like, oh yeah, but could you like <laughs> punch it up just a little bit? Like, just make it a little bit more obvious. She's like, this is good enough. Go on. <laughs> this is good enough. <laughs> and then I spent the rest of the day with mascara and a smoky, like a really nice smoky eye, <laughs> but nobody, like nobody really noticed. And then I was sitting at my desk and I was like typing and doing stuff. And then I remember... One of my coworkers looked over at me and kind of like tilted her head and was like, huh? And I looked and I closed my eyes <laughs> so she could see the smoky eye. And she went, oh, my God. I was like, yeah, it's, it's cool, right? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I took a couple of pictures. And I think there was another time where you helped me put on some eyeshadow for a photo shoot for Mustache May. Yeah. Or was it? Yeah, it was mustache man. Yes, because I was doing emotions. You had a giant mustache. <laughs> yeah, I had a huge, I had a huge handlebar mustache, but I was doing a series of emotions. Uh huh. And so I'd done disappointment one day, but then I wanted to do an opposite, like a different kind of disappointment. The first disappointment was like a, a father disappointed. This, right <laughs> but the other one was like disappointed because someone else let you down mm -hmm. and so we put 
we put eyeshadow on and I put a little clip, like a bow clip in my hair because my hair was a little bit longer. And then you gave me like a ruffly, like, I don't think it was a, sh- it wasn't a blouse or a shirt, but it had ruffles. It was some sort of shawl or it something. It was a scarf. It was a scarf. <laughs> and then, and then I just looked re- and I had the, the eyeshadow on and I just looked really. <laughs> it looked like a really sad. Really sad and disappointed. Mustached lady. <laughs> it's cute. But it's like one of my favorite pictures. <laughs> It's really cute. I don't know what it is. It's really cute. Like if I could get away with it, like fully, like nobody would ever say a word about me to my face or behind my back. <laughs> I would probably wear a smoky mm. eye eyeshadow too if yeah. I could get away with it. Just because I just Who why cares? Does, why do women get all the the cool <laughs> contouring and yeah you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean men get to use a beard to like save their chins or whatever, but <laughs> for the rest of my face, what? Yeah. Let me contour my nose into a nice (laughs) shape and give myself better cheekbones. Why can't I have that? I don't even do that. (laughs) I think it's funny that you want to do that. It's cute. I don't know if I want. I want to try it out. (laughs) So something else I wanted to talk about. We'll Mm -hmm. just segue. (laughs) Do it. I've been feeling a lot of like stress and anxiety lately because just of the way the world is right now. Yeah. And I have a lot of of different privileges afforded to me. Like I, I've been able to maintain my job through yeah. the pandemic because I work for a company that does well when shit hits the fan because mm-hmm. it's a do it yourself company, you know? And so the customer base is like when, when people are strapped, they do better business because people are, instead of buying new stuff, they're trying to fix their old stuff kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So that's a, been a privilege. They've allowed us to work from home because my job is all digital and computer based. So there's no reason for us to have to go into the office, right? Yeah. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people have to go in and work in, in jobs. Yeah. But still, I've been feeling a lot of emotion and stress. And I've started like building Magic the Gathering decks again. Mm hmm. Commander decks or EDH, uh, depending on what <laughs> generation of magic player yeah. you are. And what does EDH stand for? Elder Eld- Dragon something. Yeah, Elder Dragon Highlander. Oh, and it's Highlander. a singleton format. It's it, it's a little bit different than you would play normal magic. You can only have one of each card in your deck other than lands. Lands can be, You can have this same land over and over again. Mm-hmm. But all the other cards have to be a single copy. Whereas in normal magic, you can have up to four copies mm-hmm. and you also have a hundred cards in your deck instead of 60. But the real difference is that you have one card that's always available to you called your commander. Mm-hmm. And they basically, you can just cast them whenever you have the mana to do it. You don't have to have drawn them or found them in any way. They're just always available to you. Yeah. And usually you build your deck strategy around the powers of that card, right? Mm-hmm. You don't always. Some commander decks, the commander is inconsequential. It just gives you the colors that you wanted to play in, right? Right. But all of my commander decks, I build around the commander and I try to theme it around that. that right? makes sense. Well, yeah, because yeah, I, I think part of the part of the draw for me of magic is the creation part. Yeah. Right? The design part of it. Of I spend way more time building the decks than I do <laughs> playing them. Right? Yeah. And that's partially because of lack of opponents, but it's also partially because, you know, that part of it, that, that creating part is the real draw for me. Right. Yeah. So I'll sit and I'll go through stacks and stacks of cards. Right. But I had stopped playing magic for a very long time. I stopped in 2011 and I was only playing a uh, commander. The only cards that I'd kept were commander card or commander decks. Uh, Cause I'd gotten rid of, the, the majority of my collection in 2011 so that I could start playing regular board games. And part of that was because at the time we were living in Seattle and I had gone down to play a magic at Card Kingdom, but I got paired up against like actual mad, <laughs> Magic the Gathering pro <laughs> players mm-hmm. because they all live in Seattle, yeah, right? And they come and they play. And I was just getting completely, I was getting my ass handed to me and I just was like, <laughs> this isn't fun. Mm-hmm. And then it also, it was just starting to get too expensive to keep up yeah. with every release, right? So it's like, I can spend $60 on a board game and get a ton of play out of that. And then it can sit on my shelf for five years and I can pull it out and it's still 
a hundred percent the same thing, right? I don't have to buy anything new to make sure that it's up to date. Yeah. Whereas with magic, you have to, except for commander, that's not exactly true. That's, I think that's part of the reason commander is appealing to me is that you do not have to continuously buy cards to keep those decks up to date. They stay pretty self-contained, self-contained and, and, um, Every once in a while, a new card will come out that would be like perfect for the strategy of your deck. And you'd be like, oh, well, I'll swap that one in. Yeah. Um, you don't have to buy a whole box of booster packs to be able to keep that deck competitive. Right. You just buy one or two cards here and there. And they're mm-hmm. usually, typically, commander cards don't increase that much in value because the the cards themselves are only applicable to commander. Mm-hmm. Whereas the cards that get really expensive are the ones that you can play in all the different formats. Oh. Or that are kind of broken, right? Yeah. R- which means really powerful, right? Right, yeah. But a lot of the cards in, in Commander are also very expensive. But for fortunately for me, when I started rebuilding these decks, <laughs> I already had almost all the really powerful stuff, right? Yeah. So the only things I've had to buy is like tokens and, you know, 25 cent cards and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, I was thinking about like, why why is my interest spiking again Mm -hmm. and part of it might be because they've the newest set has gone back to zendikar which is my favorite theme Mm -hmm. of magic but i don't think that's it really i think it's that it's kind of like an old friend Mm -hmm. that i'm taking comfort in yeah while the world is kind of in chaos right Mm -hmm. so i've i've built seven commander decks and i have i'm thinking about another one right now but it's, I, I think it's just distracting me a little bit, right? Giving me something to focus on. Yeah. That's not like work, which, you know, work is, work is what I do all day. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Eight hours a day. I have to do what other people want me to do, <clears throat> which is fine. I like my job. I'm not trying to complain about that. I'm very yeah. privileged and happy that I have a job. Right. But I think that we all need something after. Right. Yeah. And, you know, TV shows are fine. Movies are fine. There's not a whole lot of that happening right now either. Yeah. But they also aren't interactive. Right. You know what I mean? I can't go shape that TV show. I can't Mm. shape that movie. Yeah. To my will. (laughs) But you can with the deck, right? And there's a creative process there. Yeah. Right. And you've taught all the boys. Well, we used it as... They were like, oh, I want to play, I want to play. And I'm like, well, you got to first, you got to learn how to read. Yeah. We used it as a, <laughs> yeah. as a, like an encouragement, like a carrot <laughs> yeah. to get them to read. And they all st- learn how to read super fast so they could play. Yeah. You know, Liam and Bryce don't want to play anymore. Mm-hmm. But I think for them, it's, it's partly because I, dr- I took them down, right, to the... <laughs> Yeah. To play in the tournaments and stuff. Played and, other people and yeah. the other people ruined it. Yeah. It's not that fun, right? Yeah. It's not that mm-hmm. fun when you're playing against people who are very like, I got to win. And if I don't win, like I've actually had a person say to me after I beat them at magic, mm-hmm. I shouldn't be losing to you. Yeah. Who well, the hell are you? I shouldn't be losing <laughs> to you. And I'm like, yeah, it's that, a fucking game of chance, bro. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. That happened to the boys because yeah. they were like, oh, I'm losing to a kid. That's not fair. Yeah, that would happen to Bryce quite and often. And he was upset yeah. about it. And he yeah. just came home one time and he's like, I don't want to play anymore. That's well, it. Bryce is also not a very competitive person. Yeah, he doesn't like hurting people's feelings. No. He doesn't like upsetting people. So no. obviously, these yeah, people even are in, upset with their own ego. Yeah, even in pretty uh, casual board games, he's like, oh, that's too mean. I don't want to do that yeah. thing. Yeah. Liam, though, loves, <laughs> he's very competitive. Mm-hmm. So it's the opposite for him. If he's losing, he's pissed off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Instead of like, you know, being upset about, and then Cameron's kind of right in the middle. Cameron really wants to win, mm-hmm. but he also like feels bad if, if, he, if like, he doesn't do well, if he doesn't do well. Yeah. And not because he's losing, but just because like, uh, like you, he doesn't want to feel dumb. Yeah. Right. He doesn't like to feel like he doesn't understand something. Yeah. So you both have like a little bit of trouble with new board games, right? Because you both yeah. don't want to feel dumb. And when, you, when you're starting to learn something, yeah, you always are going to feel dumb at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do. Yeah. We should do a whole gaming episode now. Uh, yeah, a one on board games? Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, we should like, um, 
I was going to say videotape, but <laughs> <laughs> I have a face for radio, my dear. No, no, I just filmed the game being played. We wouldn't, <clears throat> you and I wouldn't be on camera. Oh, I see. We would put the camera on the game, yeah. like set it up above the game. I see. And then just film us playing a game. That might be might be cool. Mm-hmm. Like a little extra. Yeah. Lou and me play Seven Wonders Duel or something. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I just think that it's okay. To do things as long as it's not destructive or harmful. That uh, Yeah, and yeah, you pointed out that, that magic. Are comforting. Yeah, you pointed out magic can be destructive to your wallet. And I do agree with you. Fortunately, I've built up enough of a collection to, yeah. over time. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been playing since the game released in 1993. Yeah, exactly. Long and no, time I ago. don't have any of the Power Nine cards. I was an idiot and got rid of them. <laughs> but I did have them. I was played it for a long time. And then I stopped playing it uh, for a little while uh, because there was like, you know, some upheaval in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I moved to Arizona, all my roommates were playing and it was right around the time Ice Age set had come out. And so I was like, oh, I'll jump back in. I started playing again. So I have a lot of cards from Ice Age, Tempest, Weatherlight, that yeah. that era. And then I played for a while and then dropped off again. And then when we moved to Nashville, I found a play group and started playing Magic with them every, every Wednesday. I'd mm-hmm. go over and we'd play. And that's where I learned about Elder Dragon Highlander. And it was also, you know, we were all going to tournaments and playing competitively too. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved to Seattle and I left the group behind, I I thought, okay, well, I'll just find a new group in Seattle and continue playing at tournaments and stuff. Yeah. And then Seattle totally ruined it for me. (laughs) Yeah, but it opened up designer board games. It really did. It really did. And that's still my, I still far prefer yeah. Playing a board game versus playing magic. Yeah. But like I said, I think I think right now I'm building these decks and I'm having fun building them and I'm having fun testing them against Cameron's deck. I think it's because it just feels comfortable. Yeah. Right? And and there's so much uncertainty right now mm-hmm. in the world. It's a good thinky distraction. It is a very thinky game. Almost yeah. almost too thinky sometimes. Yes. Right? Like there's some times that where like mm-hmm. I can see combos that other people might not be able to see. Yeah. But with magic, sometimes I'm like, what the, f- <laughs> it does what? I didn't even know that it would happen. <laughs> Which is not a good sign for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of tricky interactions with the rules, right? And uh-huh. so, so even though the card says on it, oh, you can do this and that, it might be the sequencing uh-huh. tweak that unless you really know the rules really well, right, you might not get it. Which is why I think you and computers can talk to each other very well because it's it's a lot of if this is happening, then this can happen. If this is happening, then this can happen. And it's like, whoa, okay, all right. Yeah. I can't keep that straight, but you can. So yeah, the more I think about it, the, I, I think I'm very much a systems thinker, mm-hmm. right? Like I think in systems, I think in full systems, but also I can zoom all the way down in to the smallest minute detail and then see all the connections Mm -hmm. coming up from that. Right. And that's good because you and computers go well together and you and like you're the you're the tech support of this house. Yeah. I think that's also (laughs) why board games appeal to me so much. Yes. Is because they're very similar. Right. There's a lot. It's a system. Yeah. It's a system of of rules and guardrails and barriers. And And some I just can't do restrictions and I just can't do some of them. Yeah. That's another thing like design as well. Design as a profession is trying to solve a problem while also figuring out how to get around these constraints that you have. Mm -hmm. And those constraints can come from the client's taste, Mm -hmm. from the stakeholder's wants, from the business's needs, Mm -hmm. from the customer's point of view. Yeah, And you have to try to to, figure out how to balance all of that. Yeah, plus it needs to look sharp and work properly and... All of those things too. Yeah. And and you know, but the longer I do it. The less that that's important. The less that I feel like the visuals are, are that important. I just want things to work. Yeah. If it looks good enough, but it functions amazing. Yeah. Then you're good. 
If it looks beautiful, but it's clunky and it's hard to use, who fucking cares about how good it looks? Yeah. It's broken. Right. So I, I really think that function is much more important than form when it comes to, you know, digital design. Yeah. But I also believe that they can harmoniously live together. But you also have to understand that the the form of stuff is always going to be subjective, right? Some people are, you know, I've been in the game for 21 years and I have plenty of people who think I'm an amazing designer, but I have just as many people who think I'm shit, mm. right? Who cares? Who cares at this stage? <laughs> right? If you think my visual design is shitty, that's fine as long as my f- functional design yeah. isn't. I think a lot of people, including our dudes in this house and in the world in general, just with COVID alone, it's like, you know, who really cares anymore, right? Yeah. We could be dealing with this for years, right? So yeah. we need and to probably make, will be. we need to make what we can do worth it to us. We, we have to do the things we can't wait. We have to do them now. We yeah. have to try at least and make ourselves feel better. It's, you know, even if they said, okay, Biden, get in there right now. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be able to turn it around. It's already like driven way past the station. He's going to have to go <laughs> drive down to the other yeah. station first, right? Like yeah. this thing's out of control and it's, I, I feel really bad because whoever it continues has, has the a presidency has a major cleanup job yeah. ahead of them. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was names. Names? Yeah. So specifically... I don't know if people know this or not, but, you know, your real name is not Lou. <laughs> That's a nickname that I've given you because you don't really like your real name. So and I never really have because I'm not no. exactly girly and I it's a pretty girly name. It's a very feminine name. And, yeah. and I'm not. And I, you know, I don't act like it. I don't. You don't feel like it fits who you I are. I absolutely don't feel like it fits me. Yeah. And I like it. It's a nice name. Well, I don't know. I know you don't like it, but that's why I don't call you it. Yeah. And unless so, I'm mad at you. <laughs> so I always wanted a nickname. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Except for when you're mad at me. <laughs> yeah, because you never go. never fun. You go, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, uh, so I've always wanted a nickname and you've always supplied nicknames for me. I give you nicknames. I We started out, I, I was calling you D for a long time. Because, like, yes, because my my usual username and my email is Dharma Frog. Right. That's where it came from. Yeah. But then we were watching, I think we were watching a Mike Ber- Berbiglia yeah. comedy special. And he was talking about his wife and he kept calling her a different name than her real name. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's hilarious. That's what we do. Yeah. And then I, I think like a couple of months or half a year later you like burped crazy (laughs) and I was like Jesus Christ Lucy Von burps (laughs) and then it just kind of stuck yeah (laughs) and I've been calling you Lou ever since that's so funny or or Lucy Von burps but okay but here's the thing I feel like if you don't if you're not feeling your name you can change it you don't have to change it legally you can be legally whatever you know your your birth name was yeah, all of your identification and all yeah, of that I stuff mean, is your legal name. you don't have to go through name. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to. I don't want to go through all that. Socially and... You don't want to change your name legally to Lucy Von Burps Matthias? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but for you guys and like new people and stuff, I'd like to go by Lou. Like that seems to fit me. Yeah. I feel better. Yes, I feel like it fits you super good. <laughs> right? Yeah, because I'm not... I'm not super feminine, but I'm not also not masculine either. I'm kind of right in the middle. I don't, yeah. I don't really have, I mean, I have a, a physical gender, but like mentally, I don't feel like a specific gender necessarily. Do you, do you I feel have, non-binary? I mean, ish. Yes. In a way I do. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I don't even want to like label it really because yeah. I don't know specifics. And right. I know that people have, you know, when they transition, they they change their names and then they're that person. And that yeah. that feels better to them. And it, so, you know, going by Lou fits me better. Yeah. So I like that. I mean, you don't like 
you know, when people call you Jim or whatever, right? No, I, and, I don't like Jim at all. I call myself Jim when I'm angry at myself. Yeah. Like, I go, damn it, Jim. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't say your name, though. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind. <laughs> um, I don't mind when people call me Jimmy. That doesn't bother me as much for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, but I don't like Jim. I don't like Big Jim. <laughs> That's so rude. I actually had chef used to call me tiny mm. and I never really minded that. But if somebody else would have you called me that. You respected him though. Yeah. I think I if think somebody that's... else was calling me tiny, I'd be like, oh, you're going to have to die now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I prefer my, I prefer my birth name. My mom called me Jamie for a long time, which is not my legal name. It's just a nickname that they had given me. Yeah. But she called me Jamie for a very long time. And I remember very, very distinctly that when we moved to Sonoma and they were enrolling me in school, they're like, and what's the child's name? And I was all James. <laughs> you just like, yeah, I'm taking this one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want, I did not want to be Jamie at that school. I'd been Jamie, you know, my entire childhood up until sixth grade when we moved. Yeah. Sixth um, grade is a big one. Well, the problem is, is that. Jamie Summers, the bionic woman, was on television <laughs> oh, oh, when no. I was a child. Oh, no. And so I was Jamie Summers, bionic woman <laughs> in the schoolyard. That's terrible. You know, I tried I tried so many times to, like, lead those kids in a right direction. Like, <laughs> I wrote the Cootie Buster song. I had, <laughs> you know, I thought that I was. But then when I got to sixth grade. I went, I, I told them to call me James, but then I created a alter ego for myself. <laughs> Emo rodent quacker. <laughs> and I had this San Francisco Giants painter's hat oh. that I folded the bill up <laughs> and wrote Emo and silver on it. Why? And I was, I ran a wrestling click at that school where we would go out into the giant field and we'd wrestle each other. Like I'm talking like, I'm talking like WWF style wrestling. Why? Body slamming each other, <laughs> pile drivers. Of course. And here's the thing. My teachers even started calling me emo. <laughs> so here's how the, here's where I got the name. There was a comedian at the time named emo. I can't remember his last name. I'll, I'll look it up and put it in the show notes. And then I had two friends whose last names were Quackenbush and Rodenquacker. Mm -hmm. Or not not Rodenquacker. That was the combination. Rodenbush. It was Quackenbush and Rodenbush. I had two friends. <laughs> so I took <laughs> I took the front of both of them, put them together, Rodenquacker. So it was emo Rodenquacker. <laughs> the Quackenbush person ended up punching me in the face for singing a, a <laughs> shitty song to him in the sixth grade. But that's As another story for another time. Have. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was a, oh boy, I was a smart ass. <laughs> really? I've been That's told, shocking. I, I was told so many times by different people, you know, one day your mouth's going to get you in some trouble you can't, you can't get yourself out of. And I'm like, oh yeah, is it? Because <laughs> yeah, I was and, a piece and, of shit kid. You know, you've turned it around and changed so much <laughs> in those times. <laughs> no, I'm no. Unrecognizable you are. No, my mouth still gets me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not as like snooty and snarky about it these days. Mm, yeah. Oh, you think I'm still? I don't know. Snooty and snarky. No, you are. You're great. Maybe with you a little bit, but not with people who could Matter. punch me in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Learn my lesson. I think you're right. I think that you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. You don't have to do it legally. You don't have to change your name legally. Just call yourself whatever you want to call yourself yeah. and feel better. And if other people don't want to call you the name, then fuck them. Say, get the fuck out of my life then. You don't want to call me by the name I want to be called. Yeah. You know, which goes into, you know, trans people are people. Leave them the fuck alone. Let well, them live their lives. Yeah, that too. They're not trying to hurt you because they, you know, just want to feel normal. Quote unquote, whatever that is. Yeah. Everybody has their own idea of what normal is, right? right? But I would say, like, in that situation, normal is not being fucking harassed yeah, for feeling a certain way. Mm -hmm. So get off their backs. Yeah. They're good people. 
all of the trans people I know are awesome people. So, yeah. you know, maybe try getting to know them before you start judging them. Exactly. And it's okay to, you know, change your pronouns if you want, whenever yeah, you want. Absolutely. You can go by whatever you want. I'm. Uh, Here's the cool part yeah. is that usually if you ask for it, people mm -hmm. will give it to you. Yeah. Right. You say, no, I go by her, she, Yeah. and people will do that for you. It's always these loud mouths that want to make a problem. Yeah. Just. What are your pronouns? It's she and her. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, mine's he and him, but it, I don't, I don't also don't. I think I'm just used to it by now is what it really is. Like Fred, she's five. Yeah. And she doesn't get pronouns yet. So sometimes <laughs> she says she when she's referring to me. Yeah. And to her brothers. I, it might just because it's, she's my daughter, but it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it would bother me if somebody else called me she, her either. Yeah. But that's not going to happen because I, <laughs> I've got a beard, right? And I've got, yeah, I've got a big body. <laughs> you got a biker body, babe. I do. God that's a good it. one. Don't worry. Gross. About it. <laughs> I have a biker body. That's what you said to me one time. We were on our way to Florida and oh, I yeah. go, I go, oh, I don't know. I don't have a beach body. And you're like, that's okay. Neither do I. I've got a biker body. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was really cute yeah. and sweet way to think of it. You always made me feel better about it. I do. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm bear shaped. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So I just think that it's okay. Like if you don't want, like, I don't think you need to legally change anything. But, you know, if somebody starts calling you something you don't want to be called, just tell them, hey, like, I don't like that. Yeah. Right. And I know it's not that easy. It's hard to do. Right. But I think if we can, if we start like standing up for each other, too. Yeah. Right. Like, hey, she doesn't want to be called that. Or, hey, he doesn't yeah. want to be called that. Yeah, exactly. Or, hey, they don't want to be called that. Like, yes. Leave them the fuck alone. Right. I. I uh, it gives ourselves permission also to have yeah. choice. If yeah. you defend others, you go, oh, okay. Well, you know, that felt okay. Yeah. Right? It's always easier to defend someone else rather than yourself. stand up for yourself. Yeah. So if you can defend some other people and like, you know, not rescue, but like try to help them or support them, mm -hmm. then, you know, you might take a look at yourself and go, okay, well, then I can, I can do that. I know it's easier for me when I'm trying to something for the kids or whatever it's easier for me to like say no and be an advocate for them than it is for myself oh yeah you're way like when it comes to the kids you're like look move out. the fuck out of yeah. the way but when it's for yourself you're like i don't know what to do right <laughs> yeah so which it's i easier. think that's average i think that's average i think yeah. most people are like that right like yeah i only am able to stand up for myself because i've just decided it doesn't i don't care yeah right like Maybe that's what 42 will give me. I hope so. I hope that you start to feel that yeah. way too. In 23 days. I think that, that, I think part of getting older is that you do stop I, I you beating know, yourself up so much. Yeah. I, but maybe that's just me. Well, and no, I think over time, as you get older, you know, after I had, after I had Freddie, I was like, you know what? This hair thing has to, you know, Yeah. I'm just gonna, I've been going gray since I was... 20 oh dying you're 21. talking about dying hair yeah. yeah and i've always just thrown a bunch of black hair dye at it and tried not to think about it but it got to the point where i was like okay do i want to be fake and you know it's okay if you want to dye your hair that's fine but i was just so tired of it by this time right you know it's almost like 15 years or something that I was dyeing my hair and I was just like, I'm just done with it. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. And I went gray, not complete, but no, I, not. now I have streaks and I'm like, okay, Which whatever. I love. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool to me. Yeah. So I just. You get compliments on it a lot too. I do get compliments yeah. on it a lot and I like that. Yeah. But I almost forget about it because it's just now it's normal to me. Right. I don't mind it. Yeah. It doesn't give me a whole lot of like, Did before you ever... I would think about, oh my, oh no, my roots are showing, my grays are showing, oh no, no, yeah. no. But now I'm like, you know what? No. Whatever makes me comfortable, that's what I'm going to do. So you never go, mm, maybe I should dye it again? No. Sometimes I go, you know what? I'd like to put a little like purple in Ooh. this because now it's white. Oh, you could get away with it. Yeah. And, and because before I had such dark hair that 
a purple dye would like not even touch oh, black hair. Oh, we should hair. try that. I like the idea of purple. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought about maybe going funky. That'd but be maybe, cool. So maybe that's what, you know, 42 will bring is just like total not caring. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll care for others and animals, but I would just, you know, I won't apologize anymore for like just being me. I will say that for a very long time, I felt very self-conscious about my gray beard mm. because I, it ages me. It makes me look older. I joke a lot around that it makes me look 72. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> I, it does make me look older than 46. Yeah. But I've tried dyeing it and that <laughs> I got a real Santa Claus situation. It will not stay. Oh, that's the cutest story ever. Can you tell the Santa Claus story? What Santa Claus story? We were in the grocery store. Oh. And these adorable little boys were staring really hard at you. Yeah, they were sitting underneath. One of and them was sitting underneath the basket and the other one was sitting in the basket. And I had a red beanie on. It was winter time yeah. and we were walking around. And I, at the time I had the very long beard because mm -hmm. I had been growing it out for that conference. And we're standing there waiting to go into the rest of the aisle. And I look over and these two kids are like, Huge eyes, huge just eyes staring, staring at, me. at you. And the one kid goes to the other kid and goes, I think that's Santa. <laughs> you can hear them. And Aww. so, and so I just winked at them Aww. and they went, oh, <laughs> oh, it was oh my God. so, so cute. <laughs> and it then was for so the rest cute. of the trip, every time we passed them again, they'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You'd hear whispers and smiles. Oh, it was so cute. Yeah. I love I that mind. you did that. I would not mind at all if little kids thought I was Santa. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Santa represents something to children. Yeah. A safe, fun, like interesting character that can that's full of magic, mm -hmm. right? It's a magical thing. Yeah. And I think that's okay to to believe those things when you're a child. Mm -hmm. In fact, I encourage it because it improves your imagination later, right? Yeah, I have. I I think we, you know. I don't think lying to your kids incessantly. We've talked about this before, though. Yeah, I don't think that's a good thing. But yeah, I, allowing I, them to believe a little magical stuff with, is fine. Here's what I what we've done with our with our little ones is that they will catch on real quick. Yeah, kids, they're too smart kids for know. Yeah. They go, wait, I've seen this wrapping paper before. Yeah. Or, and then, you know, you don't really say it. You don't say, oh yeah, I'm Santa. But you also don't say, no, I'm not Santa. Right. Right. So you just make it like, I don't know. And yeah. then you just keep. And so even, even with little Freddie, I go, well, but do you think Santa's real? And she goes, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, we, I try to make it pretty clear, like, you know, it's, oh, there's always a hint to it, yeah. not like a full on there. It's nothing. It's not real or whatever. I caught on really, really, really young too. Like, I didn't. I'd be like, <laughs> I didn't. I'd be like, wait a minute. How is he here in this mall? <laughs> in this small town? Those are helpers. <laughs> Those aren't real. So my parents told me about it when I was pretty young. And then from that point on, I kind of like helped keep the magic for my sisters. Yeah. Like I would be like, Oh my God, Santa's here guys. And like, I would yeah. kind of rally them up, you know? Yeah. Because I don't believe in, even when I was very young, I didn't believe in ruining things for other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I'm a, I'm a real anti spoilers kind of person, <laughs> but I didn't want to ruin it for them. Right. Because I got that magic. So they should also be able to get that magic. But I also have like, I feel like my whole life I've kind of had like a, like a dad life, yeah. right? Like well, you always wanted to be a dad. Protecting people who can't protect themselves yeah. and, you know, a trying to guide a caretaker. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a perfect person and, and you know, I picked on my sisters and, and was like, stop trying to play with Transformers. Those are for <laughs> boys, like stupid shit like that. But, yeah. you know, I, I also didn't want to ruin that magic of, of Christmas or the Easter bunny mm -hmm. or any of like the tooth fairy or any of those other fantasies we believe in as children, right. Yeah. That help us like explain away something we don't understand, Yeah, which is what <laughs> I don't get into that, but that's really what we still do as adults. Right. Is, yep. is we're like, Oh, I don't understand why that's happening. So I'm going to make something up that makes me feel better, or I'm going to jump onto this other thing that sounds plausible because mm -hmm. it makes me feel better, even yeah. if it's like complete magical thinking, right? Yeah. 
I think that's okay. But that's all I wanted to talk about today. Those, those three things. <laughs> it's okay to call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. Uh-huh. It's okay to allow the past to come back and kind of cuddle you when mm-hmm. you're feeling bad. The magic yeah. of the gathering. And wear nail polish and makeup if you fucking want to. Don't let society tell you what, as a man or as a woman, you should be doing. Do what mm-hmm. you want to do. But also stay safe. Yes, right? please stay safe. Be everywhere. safe. Stay very safe out there. This shit's going to hit the fan for a little while, I think. Either way. Either, yeah, <clears throat> either way. I think it's stuff's not going gonna, to be safe for everyone out it's, there. It's not, it's not, it hasn't been safe for everyone oh, out exactly. there. Exactly. But it's going to get worse for a little while. Yeah. We love you, <laughs> all of you, all and two, I love you. All two of you. I love you, too. <laughs> the Lou and Me podcast is a Matthias Soros production. The song is No Carpets by The New Forevers, produced and edited by Moose, hosted by Lou and me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.